Von Donneken is on Third Phase Moon. Welcome to the show, Eric. Well, it's a pleasure for me. I'm sitting in Switzerland. It's great to be a member of your circle. Well, let me tell you, the people are, are wondering what's going on in the world right now. Is disclosure about to happen? Eric, you've been on the frontier of this for your whole, for years, decades. Tell us what's going on. What's new? <laughs> you see, some uh, two and a half thousand years ago, the Greek historian Herodotus was in Egypt. And at that time, he wrote that under the Great Pyramid, there is a lake and the lake with clear water. And inside the lake, there is a sarcophagus. Now, nobody believed the word to Herodotus. In the meantime, and that's the news, the lake has been located. I was down there. There is, in fact, a lake with clear water under the Great Pyramid in Egypt, and in the water is a sarcophagus. Unfortunately, the sarcophagus was empty. So some uh, hundreds of thousands of before us, some, some grave rubbles have, were there. Tell me about the sarcophagus. Is uh, the Egyptian government about to do disclosure? What's going on over there with the elections and everything else? Are they going to put out that the Egyptians have been close encounters with aliens for many years, Eric? Uh, of Is course, it? yes. But you see, at the moment, the so-called Department of Antiquity has no chief. Nobody has been selected as the new professor, you know, the head of it. Before, it was Professor Dr. Sai Havas, but he's not there anymore. So, c concerning the public work, the government of Egypt says nothing. Nothing goes to the public. So, I was in the lake under the pyramid. I know the lake does exist. I know, by the way, that in the meantime, we have located by electronic meanings about one kilometer of shafts and little rooms, etc. But the government of Egypt don't go to public. There is no uh, public messages. What do you Dr. Think J, uh, he's with us right now at Third Phase Moon. We really want to thank him for setting this exclusive interview with Eric. Dr. J, any questions for oh, Eric? Oh, absolutely. Right? I've got, first of all, I, I'd like to go back to the beginning, but speaking of the pyramids real quick, what do you think they were made for? Are, are they, some people say that they were an energy source, other people say there's something else. What do you think they were made for? The thing becomes complicated and we are on telephone interview, so I have to try to make it shortly. According to official archaeology, the Great Pyramid was constructed by the pharaoh of Cheops about 2500 BC. But there are old Egyptian writers and historians who say something completely different. For example, the writer Ibrahim Abdul al makrizi he lived two, uh, 1,400 years ago. He wrote clearly and he, conduct, he knew all the old documents that the Great Pyramid was constructed before the Great Flood by a ruler with the name of Saurit. And then he says, Saurit is the same person which the Hebrew call Enoch. Now, Enoch is a fascinating figure for me. He was the seventh patriarch before the Great Flood. And Enoch had contact with extraterrestrials, and finally he disappeared in a fiery chariot from our planet. So these antique Egyptian historians, and there is more than one, they say the Great Pyramid was not made by Cheops, but was made before the Great Flood. By the way, all the other historians, if you read uh, Platon or Strabon or Plutarch or Diodor from Sicily, they all say that the old Egyptians did not know who was the constructor of the pyramid because it was made before the Great Flood. And all these figures I just mentioned were historians which all were in Egypt some 2,000 years ago. So the, the puzzle becomes more complicated than we believe. Eric, let me, let me ask you this question. We at Third Phase of Moon just recently, via Jimmy Church and some people that did some research via Google Earth, found a massive of what looks to be an alien base of some sort, massive in structure, 1.5 million, uh, 1.5 miles wide, 2. Uh, miles wide. Do you think 
And this is right off the coast of Malibu. There's a lot of stuff underneath the water. Is there a lot of things that the Egyptian government's not sharing with us, like uh, which is underground? Are there still tombs underneath the cities, secrets to be found? Yes, definitely. Of course. I know some Egyptologists, people who live in Egypt, who are archaeologists, good friends of me, and they say, in reality, we only know about 40% about the ancient history and Egyptian history. 60% are still under the earth. And you know, in Saqqara, there is the Steppe Pyramid. But in the desert, under Saqqara, there are kilometers and kilometers of tunnels. And right and left to the tunnels are large, large niche, uh, niches. I also apologize for my English, my German, my, my mother language is German. So there are niches right and left in, from the tunnels. And in these niches, gigantic sarcophaguses. And really, they are tunnels of kilometers. Open to the public are about 500 meters. So the rest is still a secret. You know, Mr. Von Donneken, I'd, I'd like to go to the beginning. I, I, knew, I realized you grew up as a Catholic, and there was a point in your life when you realized that the God that you were b taught to believe in, uh, why was he participating in things such as destroying a wall? Can you tell us the turning point in your life? Where you of course. Yes. I was, uh, well, for six years in Switzerland in a Catholic boarding school led by Jesuits. And of course, as a boy, I was a deep, deep believer in God. By the way, I'm still a believer in God. I'm still one of these figures who pray. But God, in my youth, had to have some minimum qualities. For example, God is out of time. God does not have to make an experience, and then he has to wait what the result will be. Out, being out of time means he knows the result before or God would never need a vehicle in which to move around from point A to point B, because God is almighty, etc. So these were qualities of God. And then in my school, we had to make translations of parts of the Bible from Greek to Latin and from Latin to German. And I realized that in the Bible, at least, God uses a chariot, for example, described in the prophet Ezekiel, and Ezekiel even describes detail, like the wings, like the noise, like the, the, the feet, like the wheels, etc. Or Moses describes different time when God descends on the holy mountain, it was with smoke, fire, trembling, loud noise and all these things. So I simply had doubts in my own education. I had doubts in my own religion and I wanted to find out if other communities in antiquity have similar story. So that was the starting point for me. That's now over 60 years ago, because in the meantime, I'm nearly 80. Well, Eric, you've been on national media speaking about this for, for decades now. What has the major media thought of your story? Are, are they shutting this down? Is it tongue-in-cheek? Is the word getting out? Third phase moon, we... The people are listening. People want to listen to what you think. Is a major media picking up? Is there going to be disclosure? <coughs> well, you see, in the beginning, and at least for the last 25 years, I was more or less always crashed down. And there were always some debunkers, mostly from the religious side, who said, this is all rubbish, that's all nonsense. We were never visited by extraterrestrials. <coughs> because the distances from star to star are too big. Nobody can reach these distances, with speed, and there is no speed of light, and all these uh, natural obstacles. So I was mostly uh, disproven. But in the last 10 years, I am very, very happy the situation has changed. As you know, in the United States, you have this History Channel, and History Channel, since three years, they have a series called Ancient Aliens, and it's very, very successful. Or in Switzerland, for example, our biggest newspaper, it has the name Blick. And since three years, I am writing every week a column in this biggest Swiss newspaper. Something which, which would have been incredible, impossible some 25 years ago. Or I have so many invitations, be it for uh, banks 
or even uh, uh, organizations like the Freemasons, or I myself not the Freemason, but I'm high invitation there, or be it on, on universities. So the situation has changed. I am very, very happy to be alive. My brain functions, and uh, I still run around the world. Do you think that uh, NASA is kind of covering up what's going on in Egypt? It's all mission control, as Zachariah has said in his book, The Twelfth Planet, that it's like a three-stage rocket. The evidence is clear. Is there any more new evidence that's coming out through these uh, discoveries? No, not to my knowledge. But you see, all this cover-up is in reality, I don't call it cover-up. Of course, some scientists and some groups know more than what they give to the public. But it's, it's not directly to call cover-up. They simply are afraid. They don't know, they don't have enough information. And they want to be scientific. To be scientific means always uh, to be reasonable. So somebody, if somebody is not reasonable, if somebody is unreasonable, uh, he is ridiculed. So they are afraid to be ridiculed. Th that's all. They have uh, it's a lake of civil courage. While I am one of these persons which are unreasonable, I ask some unreasonable questions. And I hope the time will give us right sooner or later. I think, Eric, you're right on the button. It's, if you don't ask the big questions, and if you don't uh, create a controversy in its own way of uh, whether we believe the Bible, Christianity, Mohammed. <laughs> you see, well, what is, this is something. Let's take, first we have the Jewish religion where it said there is only one God, Yahweh. Then we have the Christian religion, which they say, the God has a son, Jesus, and Jesus died for our sins here. Then comes Mohammed, and he says he had visions by an archangel, uh, Michael. And uh, Michael, uh, the archangel told him that the Christian religion is completely wrong, and Mohammed has now the newest religion. Thousand years or thousand five hundred years later, and this just as an example, we have in the United States a new religion called the Mormons. Now again, an angel uh, was seen to uh, Mr. Joseph Smith, who told them the old religions are wrong. So in this case, we have in four cases that mm -hmm. uh, said that some angel or some strange being told that the old religion is wrong. So what should you believe? You cannot believe nothing. All that you can believe is outside there, in the beginning of the universe, there is a force which we respectfully call God. But the human religions, this is just human wishes, human dreams, human writings. Practically not much of it is true. Do you think that the ETs created us just as the Sumerian tablets were uh, said? Yes and no. It's too complicated. Of course we have evolution on this planet. And do not, I, I do not doubt that we are a product of evolution. But there are two main questions. What started evolution? And here we have a theory that the original message, you see the DNA, has come from outside. So evolution did not start on our planet. The information was coming from outside. So we grow up in an evolutionary way, and then some, some thousands and thousands of years ago, an extraterrestrial spaceship arrived here. As expected, they found life on this planet. And as expected, there was one form of life which was the most advanced one. For example, Cro-Magnon uh, uh, man. Now they took one exemplary, and from this one exemplary, simply one cell. They changed this cell. You know, you, all, all what you have to change is the, the, the basic. There are always four bases in the DNA. Every genetic knows, and every genetic would be able to do it. So they changed the, the cell. They put the cell back into a liquid of nourishing. Later, it was put into the womb of a female of the same species. Now this female gives birth to a child. And the child has, of course, the evolution. It has the body, the skeletons, and all these king, things. But because of the uh, artificial mutation, the child has something in plus which the rest of the family tree, 
let's say the gorillas, the chimpanzees, etc., does not have. Now you have a new branch. Soon, as you will, if you wish to continue a new branch, you need at least two of them, one male and the other female. And then you land in the legend of God created Adam and Eve. Please. I've moved.